Welcome. This is a very short exposition about the lecture one in Math 1A. So first of all, I want to address the question, what is calculus? And uh, in a short sentence, one can say calculus is about predicting the future by analyzing the past. <clears throat> Now there are two important things here. When we analyze the past, we want to see how things have changed. So this is a, we look at change. <clears throat> and then when we want to make the prediction, we sum up. <clears throat> so there are two things. And these two things are essential in calculus. This produces the derivative. <clears throat> And this produces the integral. <clears throat> and these two things are linked together in a nice way. In order to illustrate this, let me just uh, start with a, a riddle here. <clears throat> so how does the following sequence continue? <clears throat> and I start here with a sequence <clears throat> question is, what do we get here? If you looked at, at that also in class a little bit, but uh, if you look at that, just it, it, it doesn't, there doesn't seem to be any pattern here. And it's difficult to see this without uh, some tools. And uh, what we can do is uh, just take this calculus paradigm and uh, look what happens with the change. So what we can do is we can look at the rate of change here. How does it change from here to here? How does it change from here to here, etc. So when we go from here to here, we actually get seven. When we go from here to here, we get 90. <clears throat> when we go from here to here, we get uh, uh, 32 plus five, 37. <clears throat> if we go from here to here, we have to add uh, 55 plus, so 35, 55, 61. <clears throat> so we will call this uh, also then a function here. This is actually what we call a function. It takes some input and gets some output. So the first value which we get here is uh, a one. The second value is nine. The third value is 28 and so on. And that's what we call the derivative. So that's uh, df, I always denote this D df here in this first lecture. That's the derivative, that's the rate of change. And then we can uh, continue. So we still don't see how this actually is going to uh, continue. Uh, and then we can take the second <coughs> rate of change here. So let me just do that here. So what we get is 12. From here to here, we get uh, 18. <coughs> When we go from here to here, we get uh, 24. <clears throat> and now you kind of see already some something emerging, or at least a conjecture, how this can continue. Because if you take the third derivative here, we can get from here to here, we have six. And then here from here to here, we have six. So if we kind of assume this is kind of just now, we could have started with a little bit a longer sequence here. But if I assume here, that this was, let me just make this red here, six, six, that it continues with six here as a trend here, that we have six, then I know what happens in the next step here. That will be just an arithmetic progression here, just linearly growing, right, by six, by six, and then again by six, I would actually get 30 here. And then in the next step, so now I know I have now to add 30 here for the, for the, for, for, for this, on this level here, so this is 30 plus 61, this is 91. And then I have now what, I, I, I know now what I have to add here to get to the next step. So this is 270. So that's, that's, our, that's our prediction. <clears throat> uh, 
And uh, let me look at, at more examples uh, in in class. And but it's an important thing that you can do that that you can kind of look at data and analyze them, make a model, and say, okay, how does this actually grow? So you see, this is this is constant here. This is a linear growth. This is actually a quadratic growth. And you can see, this is actually a cubic growth. And what we have is a, we have actually a function which we can use here. Let me just what the function is. So in this case, it has to be cubic. So let's try cubes. One eight twenty seven. Because you see, it's actually just one plus plus that. So we have a function f of x is equal to x to the three plus one. So this is our model for the data. And indeed, it works here. And if we apply here, this is one. This is what we get when we, when we apply to one, to two, to three, to four, to five, to six. And it, indeed, if you take f of uh, seven, <coughs> right, this is seven cubed plus one. This is uh, 217. So we have hit the jackpot and we have a really uh, a, a, a good model. So this can be anything. This can be financial data. This can be, you know, this can be your bank account. <laughs> Hopefully growing like that. In my case, it's just decreasing all the time. So I have a model there too. And, uh, or it can be, it can be anything. It can be growth of something. It can be, uh, so it's extremely important uh, that we can, that we are able to analyze functions, make a model for functions and use them. And also this process here, the process of taking derivatives, this will be one half of calculus. So there's another half of calculus which deals with summation. And uh, so that's what we have just done here. What calculus is predicting the future from anal analyzing the past. That's, uh, we have already done that. Differences and sums, let me just formalize this and then already formalize the fundamental theorem of calculus. That's the goal of the entire course to, to, to understand this. But we can already understand this on on a on a on a, on a you know dis discrete discrete level. <clears throat> Let's look at differences and sums of a of a function. Let's take this function f of x is equal to x square. So uh, this data it can also be plotted. You can also plot this, and that's that's an important visualization tool. We take x here and f of x here. And then we say what happens at one, two, three, four, five. And uh, here maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <coughs> this, is, this is 20. And so we can one, two, three, four, five. Now we can plot this, uh, this, this data here. So at one, we get one. <coughs> Two, we get four, one, two, three, four. So that's here. At three, we get nine. At four, we get 16. And at five, finally, we got uh, here, five. So these are data points. So this is a function here. We call this a function. And uh, uh, we call this also the graph, even so we have now all, only data points. So this is the, these are the, <coughs> we graph the function. <coughs> you all know the square function, right? If you take the square function, actually, this will be on a, on a parabola f of x is equal to x square. <coughs> But now what we have seen is uh, we have seen the notion of the of the derivative. So what we have taken is and we evaluated at z, the derivative at zero. We look how does it change. So that's the that that's that's one. From here to here it has changed by from one to four, which is three, and then from here to here it has changed by five. From here to here it has changed by seven. From here to here, it has changed by nine. So let me just write this down again, like like before. So what we have seen is one, 
4, 9, 16, 25, 36 would be the next thing. Now we take the derivative. The derivative, that's the rate of change. We go from here to here. We, add, we have 3, 5, 7, 9, uh, 11. <coughs> and now the second derivative is the rate of change of that. That would be then just 2, 2, 2, 2, 2. In this case, we know that this has to be then that the next step will have to be 2, so this has to be 13. <clears throat> and then we know the next one here, we know this has to be 49. So this is 36 plus 13. This is the, the prediction. <clears throat> so we have again this analyzing the data by looking at the rate of change. By look how the data changed, so this f function is also kind of just data. <coughs> data are given by a function. This is the first function value, second function value, third function value, etc. So this is the rate of change. This is your bank account. How much income did you get? And that's the second rate of the rate of change of the rate of change. That's d square f. That's the. That's what we will call the acceleration also in. Uh, velocity and acceleration in, 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 in physics. But uh, one of the things is what we have uh, also, uh, at, uh, what we can do is we can sum things up. So this is the, this is the, the derivative. We can also say SFx, that's f of 0 plus f of 1 plus f of 2 plus f of x minus 1. <coughs> and this is done in such a way that if it is add up the differences, we get the function back. So this is pretty cool. So these are two things which are essential in calculus. There are two things in calculus. There is one thing which adds things up, that will be an integral, and we have another thing which looks at the rate of change, which is here. So what we can do is we can take this rate of change function which we had, and now we can add things up. So we can add from here to here, so we have one, then we have and then we have 4, and then we add up plus 5, we get 9, and then we add up plus 7, this is 16, we add up 9, this is 25. So when we, when we go backwards, we have the derivative, we get back to the function here by some summation. <clears throat> so what we have is uh, f of x is uh, df0 plus df1 plus df x minus 1. f of x, that's the rate, that's the change, f of x minus f of 0, that's the change from f of 0 to f of x, that's the total change here. So this total change here is what you see overall. This change is made up of these, all these small, small changes here. <clears throat> so we see this uh, uh, two things are related with each other. Don't worry too much about it yet because this is the goal of the entire course to understand this. But that's it for today. <clears throat>